Hey, deserving listeners. I was at a conference recently for therapists, and the keynote speaker was talking about the different generations. You know, you have the baby boomers, the Generation X, Generation Y, millennials, blah, blah, blah. And she said that millennials are more narcissistic than other generations of the past. She talked about how young people today are obsessed with social media and selfies and self-help and self-expression. And she made a really convincing argument that uh, young people are becoming more narcissistic these days, and the crowd seemed to really agree with her claims. But she didn't provide any research to back up her claims. So after the conference, I asked around uh, lay people and particularly other clinicians who you know might know about this sort of thing, and they all agreed with the keynote speaker. They told me that uh, not only are young people today becoming more narcissistic, but everyone is becoming more narcissistic these days, all age groups. They, you know, they would say things like, you know, look at Facebook. Everyone's taking selfies and, you know, taking pictures of themselves. I mean, people are posting pictures of their food for crying out loud. Who wants to know about that? But, you know, this stuff seemed anecdotal. So I looked to the media uh, next, started Googling around. And boy, did I find a lot of people in the media claiming that young people are more narcissistic these days. Here are some quotes. Are we more narcissistic than ever? The answer is yes. Another quote here. What do Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, and Justin Bieber have in common? Grandiose exhibitionism, inflated self-views, superficial personalities, and shameless self-promotion. In that sense, they are just like millions of Facebook and Twitter fans around the world. Welcome to the age of digital narcissism. So Google told me that absolutely we're more narcissistic these days. But again, these are lots of claims, but no evidence. So I started looking up articles on the internet written by psychologists and other researchers. They also claimed that people are more narcissistic these days. Here's some quotes. According to new research, young people today are significantly more narcissistic than during the 1980s and 1990s. Another quote here, millennials are more narcissistic than boomers and Gen Xers. But sometimes these researchers will exaggerate their findings in the media, so I decided I would review their research. Several experts, I found found several experts in the area of narcissism through the generations, And many experts have claimed that data shows that young people are more narcissistic these days. The main researchers I want to point to are people like Gene Twenge, Conrath, Foster, Campbell, Bushman, and others, particularly Gene Twenge. Gene Twenge, she has made a career of uh, from her research regarding narcissism among young, young people today. So these researchers, this, you know, this group of researchers and others have conducted many studies, mainly in the late aughts. They've written many books, they've written articles, they've been interviewed on the media, all over the media, New York Times, The Atlantic, NPR, Fox News, all over the place. And they've called this new generation, the younger generation, Generation Me. And you would think that what they're talking about are millennials, but actually what they're talking about are people born in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So I was born in the 70s. I'm 47 right now. And so I guess they're talking about me. So they're not talking about people born in the aughts. They're not talking about teenagers today. They're talking about people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, I guess. And they say that uh, people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s today, that they are more egotistical, they're entitled, and self-centered. And they say that we all grew up in a culture of narcissism. One of the most famous studies was by Twenge et al. in 2008. They compared scores of narcissism of young people from 40 years ago to narcissism of young people in 2008. And they looked at studies that used the narcissistic personality inventory. So remember this this measure because it's important to all this. So the narcissistic person the narcissistic personality inventory apparently is a standard measure for measure for quickly measuring people's narcissism. So personality testing t- to determine narcissism can take 
uh, hours or days or months. When I'm uh, assessing narcissism, I take five to 10 sessions with someone and particularly, and I, and it's hard for me to detect if they're trying to resist anyway, but for some purposes, you don't have five to 10 weeks to evaluate every participant. So they, a number of years ago, they developed this thing called the narcissistic personality inventory, which has 40 questions and it can be done in probably five or 10 minutes. So on that survey, this is self-report survey. So it's not a clinician, you know, observing someone, it's actually them self-reporting. So you have questions like, I like to be the center of attention, or I think I am a special person. So questions like these apparently indicate narcissistic personality. So people would take this survey and then average scores were compared for young people from before to young people of today. And what they did, these twins and colleagues they did, is they reviewed many, many studies that were conducted over the years. And they found that young people of 40 years ago had an average score of about 16 on the narcissism scale, 16 out of 40. Whereas young people of today had an average score of 18. So 40 years ago, 16. And then in 2008, a score of 18. So that's about a two-point increase in narcissism over the span of 30-some years or something. And a few other studies by those experts in this area found corroborating evidence that indeed younger people today are, are more narcissistic than people of the past, young people of the past. So there you go, right? Slam dunk, multiple lines of evidence, all pointing to the fact that people are more narcissistic these days. Presenters at conferences say it's true. My friends and family say it's true. Uh, clinicians around me, my colleagues say it's true. The media says it's true. Researchers say it's true. And many clinicians and many people in our society, many people in the media just claim it as fact. They just go, well, just look at Facebook. It's fact. People are more narcissistic these days. But I'm still skeptical <laughs> because people have been saying this about young people since the ancient Greeks. And when I was in the third grade, I remember saying to my friends, today's second graders are way more selfish than when we were in the second grade just last year. So I remember saying that. I remember thinking, oh, the second graders of today, they're, you know, they're so immature and selfish. When we were in the second grade just last year, we were mature and not selfish. You know, I, I, I just think it's a general bias that we have about young people, that younger people are immature or narcissistic or lack integrity or something. So I was still skeptical, even though everyone was telling me, including, you know, experts, including researchers, including people who have gathered empirical data. You know, I'm still skeptical because I'm just, I'm just like, I don't know, just, just something about this doesn't feel right. You know, I guess partially because I've been a family therapist uh, for over 20 years, and I've treated many teens and young people, and I have, and you know, over time, and I have found that the the problems that young people have today, the problems that ten, young people had 10 years ago, the problems that young people had 20 years ago, the problems I had uh, 30 years ago, uh, they're generally similar. Now, I'm guessing the problems of teenagers a hundred years ago were quite different, but I feel like things have been fairly stable over the past, I don't know, since I was a teenager anyway. I hear the exact same problems and concerns from teenagers today as, as now it'll look a little different. Obviously when I was young, we didn't have cell phones or computers really. And so there, the content will be different, but the themes are the same anyway. So, so I decided to look more closely at the research because I'm like, well, that's what they're, that's what they're saying in their conclusions. In their conclusions and in the media, they're like, yep, young people are more narcissistic these days. But then I'm like, well, let me look more closely at the research. And after looking more closely at uh, the various different studies that are pointed to and looking at their methods, I immediately saw problems with their research. And here's a list of the problems. There are six problems that I found, six major problems. Number one, most of the studies looked at college students from regular four-year universities. So that's their sample. That's the people that they looked at over the decades, college students at four-year universities. So this includes most young people. It excludes young people who don't go to college, which is about 30% of people, 30% of young people. Uh, 
It also excludes young people who go to community college, which is about half of college students today. It'd be like if a researcher wanted to study all women, and they only, but they only you know, looked at white women, or they only looked at women in Seattle, for example. You know, everyone knows that those samples are not representative of all women. So just looking at uh, students of uh, you know, four-year colleges, four-year universities, everyone knows that's not representative of all young people. Now, I just wanna say there's nothing wrong with using a convenient sample. When I've done research, I've used uh, uh, samples of convenience, but that needs to be disclosed whenever you talk about your findings, either in your report or in the media. But guess what? I've never heard Twenge and her colleagues mention this limitation when they're being interviewed in the media. They just claim that their findings are generalizable to all young people. And, you know, lots of researchers do this sort of thing. Uh, the validity of their research sort of depends on them denying these limitations. But anyway, so right there, because of this massive limitation to their sample, the study's validity is instantly called into question. And I could just end right there. I could just go, okay, right there, we can pretty much take all that research with a grain of salt due to the sampling problems. I could just end right there, but there's more. Number two, the sort of people who attended college in the 70s are of a completely different demographic than the sort of people who attend college today. Uh, for example, about twice as many women are going to college now, more non-whites are going to college now, more international students, older people are going to college now, more low-income people are, are attending college these days. So it's impossible to know what's happening here. It's possible that the changes in demographics from the 70s and 80s to today and 2008, it's possible that those changes in demographics are responsible for the changes in narcissism scores. There's just no way to know because the studies didn't control for those factors. So in other words, did their findings demonstrate that we're becoming more narcissistic or did their findings demonstrate that the changing demographic is responsible for an increase in narcissism? It's impossible to tell from their method. Number three, the main meta-analysis by Twenge et al. in 2008 that is often pointed to in the media, this study excluded a bunch of studies for, in my opinion, arbitrary reasons. And other researchers have made this claim as well, and they've looked into why these studies were excluded. For example, Trezanuski et al. 2008 looked into it, and they found that if they added just one study to the Twenge meta-analysis, that this halved the effect size. So just adding one other study, like why was that study exclude, excluded? Well, let's put that in there. And then the effect size goes down, down to a half. So this raises a number of questions. What would have happened if more of these excluded studies were included? And why were those studies excluded? They said it's because they, that they didn't include the mean, but other researchers and myself are looking at that and saying, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. So it raises the question, did they cherry pick the studies to make sure that their findings matched their narrative? It's unknown. You know, we don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but it wouldn't be the first time that something like this has happened in psychological research. Number four, other studies have found that narcissism rates have remained the same over the past number of decades. For example, a study by Trezanuski and Donnell in 2007 found that when a more representative sample was used, there was no difference in narcissism scores between young people in the past and young people today. And there have been several other studies with very similar results. So right there, we should have major reasons to question the narrative that people are getting more narcissistic, right? Not only do the studies that somehow prove that we're getting more narcissistic have problems and limitations that you know, call the data into question, but there are other studies showing that we're actually not getting more narcissistic over time. But guess what? Fox News, uh, New York Times doesn't want to interview those people. Number five, the main measure that these researchers used to measure narcissism is the narcissistic personality inventory. But this inventory measures, measures several aspects of personality, not just narcissism. So again, remember that measure that I was, that, that survey that I was talking about with 40 questions that supposedly measures narcissistic personality called the narcissistic personality inventory. Uh, 
So some of the questions are clearly measuring narcissism. Questions like, I like to be the center of attention, or I am an extraordinary person, right? So th that's pretty clearly trying to get at narcissism. But there are other questions that are clearly measuring something other than narcissism, or at least something tertiary to it. For example, I am assertive, or I like to be complimented. So just think about that. If you said, yes, I like to, I, I am assertive, I'm an assertive person, then that's a, you know, that's a tick mark in the column of you are narcissistic. How does that make any sense? I mean, I could see how assertiveness would be associated with narcissism, but it's not narcissism. Being assertive is actually quite different from narcissism, right? Being assertive is being healthy, right? Or things like, I like to be complimented. You know, I don't know. I mean, certainly narcissistic people probably really like to be complimented, but shouldn't everyone like to be complimented on some level? So, you know, those items are, uh, like I said, potentially uh, associated with narcissism, but not necessarily. But in the big study by Twenge et al. 2008 that's often pointed to as the standard of, uh, of research regarding this topic, these researchers, they just looked at the overall score. They didn't tease out these uh, different subscales. So this just, this just has all 40 items and you just take, you know, you just take the score and they just compared those, those full scale results over time. So in other words, it's possible that young people today are just more assertive and more comfortable with getting compliments rather than actually being more narcissistic. I mean, just that difference. Let's just say that young people today are more assertive and more comfortable with compliments. Just that difference in personality would give you a two point increase in narcissism that we see from, you know, before to 2008. Um, and other research supports this notion uh, that when you actually break out the different subscales of the measure, you find that the, 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 the more healthy versions of narcissism are potentially increasing over time. And the last thing we should point out, number six, is the researchers failed to emphasize that the increase in this so-called narcissism was only found among women. <laughs> when I read this, I was like, what? So, so the main study that everyone points to that supposedly proves that we're becoming more narcissistic, in that study, they found that for men, narcissism has remained the same over the past 30 or 40 years. But for women, they found that narcissism has increased. For men, stayed the same. Women, it's, it's increased. But that's not what they're talking about. They're not writing this in the conclusions. It's not what they're talking about in the media. When they go on Fox News, that's, that's not what they're saying. They're saying that all young people are more narcissistic these days. So this raises the question, why would you do that? Why would you hide the fact that your data shows that young women are more narcissistic these days while young men have remained the same regarding narcissism? At least a lot of evidence points in that direction. Why would you hide that? Well, I don't know. I would speculate that they know that if they revealed this finding, that many people, particularly in academia, that these people would wonder if the increase was due to female empowerment and not actually increases in narcissism. Again, if women today feel more assertive and are you know, more confident in themselves, then that could bump up that, that full scale result you know, a few points, right? And you're gonna see that in the data because the measure, the narcissistic personality inventory has a lot of questions on it, some of which are measuring, uh, shall we say, destructive narcissism. And some of the questions are just measuring self-confidence and self-reliance. So let's summarize. Most of the studies looked at college students from regular four-year universities, which is not representative of young people in general. Number two, the sort of people who attended college in the 70s are of a completely different demographic than the sort of people who attend college today. I mean, maybe not completely, maybe that's exaggerating, but a different demographic. Number three, the main meta-analysis by Twinge et al. excluded a bunch of studies for, in my opinion, arbitrary reasons. Number four, other studies have found that narcissism rates have remained the same over the past number of decades. Number five, the narcissistic personality inventory measures, measures several aspects of personality, not just narcissism. <laughs> 
And number six, the researchers failed to emphasize that the increase was only found among women. So let's review. Many people claim and believe that we're getting more narcissistic. It's essentially common knowledge these days. People around me say it's true. The media says it's true. Researchers say it's true. But when we look more closely at the research, it's not convincing. And there's plenty of evidence that we're actually not getting more narcissistic. So this raises the question, why would everyone assume that young people are, are you know, totally factually getting more narcissistic when there's no data to support that? Well, I would, I would speculate the following two things. Number one, we tend to forget or deny how self-centered we were when we were young. Uh, for example, for many years, when I looked back on my teenage years, I saw like a certain level of immaturity. I was like, yeah, I was probably immature, but I wasn't that immature, right? I wasn't, I was self-centered, but I wasn't that self-centered, right? But then I saw this one video. So my dad, you know, he had a video camera and he would video us at Christmas and stuff. And there's this one video of me of Christmas in the eighth grade. And I am so immature in this video. I'm being a jerk to everyone in my family. I'm being completely self-centered and, you know, self-obsessed in that moment. And, you know, it's cringeworthy. It is awful to watch. It's mortifying. So without that video, I would have been completely unaware of how self-centered I was back then. Uh, one could say that would have been a better life because ignorance is bliss. But anyway, my point is, is that um, I wouldn't, I would have said, ah, oh, you know, I wasn't self-centered back then, but man, watching this video, it's like, oh God, it's awful. And so unless your dad videotaped you in your cringeworthy moments when you're, you were a young person, you may not actually remember due to bias and forgetfulness about how uh, immature or narcissistic you were. And so when you see narcissism, so to speak, in young people, you're like, oh, I wasn't that narcissistic back then, but you actually might have been. And according to research, on average, you were. Number two, speculation. I think we're just jealous of young people because, you know, they have their whole life ahead of them. And, you know, when we were younger, we might have been thinner and healthier, you know, back then. And we look at young people and we think, oh, you're thin and young, and we're jealous of that. And what do we do when we're jealous? Well, we attack and we ridicule people. And let's just say this, sometimes clinicians and researchers fall prey to this jealousy and denial of the past. So I think that's what's happening. So in conclusion, what I'll say, again, I just want to reiter reiterate, there's no compelling evidence, no convincing evidence that we are becoming more narcissistic as a whole and that young people are becoming more, more narcissistic. In fact, there's a lot of research saying that we're not becoming more narcissistic. We're not less narcissistic. We seem to be of the same rate of narcissism. And this, you know, spans, you know, the time prior to Facebook, during Facebook, you know, it's it's been pretty consistent because Narcissism is an extremely complicated uh, personality trait and has much more, it has to do with society and has to do with Facebook, but has much more to do with the way that you're raised. And it's, um, you know, it's just, I won't go into that. Listen to my other episodes about narcissism to find more about that. Um, most notably, my 11 hour deep dive. I have an 11 hour episode on narcissistic personality disorder. So, uh, if you want access to that, you have to become a patron of the podcast by going to patreon.com. When you become a patron on Patreon, you get access to hundreds of exclusive episodes that are only available for patrons, uh, things on narcissism and other personality disorders and a whole host of things. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Thanks for joining me. Please take care of yourself because you deserve it. And you deserve to not necessarily think that you're narcissistic. <laughs> what a terrible ending. Anyway, take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really do.